So I just left BJ's, had to get some powdered peanut butter, PB Fit. It's kind of dark, PB Fit. Alex's favorite stuff. I'm mixing my pre-workout, about to head straight to the gym. Almost out of these samples. I'm gonna go with two of them. I have this problem where I just throw the empty packet back in the box. So I'm like full of empty packets. Going with two, two scoops of the XE. About to hit a pull workout, back in biceps. Gonna go kill it. All right, first exercise of the day is going to be lat pull downs up there, superset with um, dumbbell curls. So before we get started with our working sets, we're gonna do four sets of 10 working sets. Before that, we're gonna do probably three, uh, three supersets. We're just gonna do the lat pull down superset with dumbbell, dumbbell curls, but um, we're just gonna do it lightweight, get the blood flowing, warm up, warm up nice and good, and then start our working sets, four sets of 10. Now, I get some questions sometimes about um, how many warm up sets should you do? Uh, should you do a warm up set with each exercise? And the answer to that is no. You should do warm up sets in the beginning of your workouts when you're rolling out or you're stretching. You should do your warm up sets then. Then when you move on to your second exercise, you don't need to warm up still. So just warm up before that first, first set, first exercise, just like we're gonna do today. Do a couple warm up sets and then start our working set. So first exercise, lat pull downs, dumbbell curls. Next exercise is going to be cable rows with the V bar, superset with seated barbell rows. Now, if you don't know what seated barbell rows are, you're gonna see in a minute, but work with just the bar first and then feel the weight up. Go, go by 10 pounds each side, maybe five pounds each side. Feel it out, it's kind of a different exercise. That's the next set, or that next superset. So let's go. one round three is going to be two arm dumbbell row so instead of doing one arm rows we're doing both at the same time basically you set up just like you're gonna do a barbell row and you're basically just doing it with dumbbells super set with regular barbell curls so set them up close to each other I've got my barbell right there I've got my dumbbells right here so ready to go four sets 10 reps let's go
So guys, I wanted to bring up a topic uh, that has come up a couple times and since I've been doing a lot of demos, they've come up at the demo sometimes. And the question is, what kind of protein should I buy? Pretty simple. You would think it's pretty simple, but rather than telling you should you buy this product or this product, I wanna, come, I wanna pinpoint certain things that you should be looking for for yourself in a protein. Let's say for the sake of numbers, we'll say 100 grams is a serving size in a protein, okay? So 100 grams serving size and you're only getting 50 grams of actually, of actually protein in that product. Now that's not very good given you're paying the amount for a protein product and you're only paying for 50% and the rest of that, the other 50 grams is just fillers. Makes no sense. So I'm gonna use this protein for example that I'm using right now. Um, 22 grams of protein in that product multiplied by 100 that's going to give you 2200 now you divide that by the actual serving size in grams 29.4 and that's going to give you the percentage of protein you're actually paying for 74.8 so seeing that you're paying for 74 percent of the product that's pretty good given a lot of brands have only 50% of protein per gram that you're actually paying for. So value is key when you're looking at the yield of a protein. So the next thing I want to talk about is amino acids. I talk about amino acids a lot. I talk about the amino X and the amino X edge. Now what you're looking for in that is you're looking for First, we'll talk about branch chain amino acids. Now, those are a group, a small group of amino acids that are essential for the anabolic. They help synthesize other proteins to the muscle, creating that anabolic effect. So that's definitely a must have in your protein. The next one is essential amino acids. So a protein is made up of 20 amino acids. So the essential amino acids are gonna determine how complete and incomplete the protein is. So when you're going at the store or whatever it is online, check the nutrition facts in your protein and just pull it up on the phone on the internet. Just get a list of all the amino acids, branch chain and essential amino acids, and just bounce that off of your product. So take a look at the back of your product, find where the amino acids list is, and just bounce it off your phone or whatever it is looking on the internet and just bounce it off make sure you're getting those all the branch chain amino acids and all your essential amino acids so the next one i'm talking about is the type of protein now protein is protein correct now there's different types of protein depending on the molecule size of the protein so when we're talking about it, we're talking about whey, we're talking about casein, we're talking about soy, we're talking about animal protein, we're talking about egg protein. Okay, so those are different just type of supplements of the protein, okay? So when you talk about whey protein, a lot of people preach whey protein because it's fast acting. They say have a protein shake post-workout, then you want a whey protein shake. Those are the types of things that people are gonna kind of push you in each direction. Okay, so what type of protein you want? Well, I'm not too sure. Okay, well, try this one or this one or this one. So what, you sh what these people should be asking you is, when are you gonna take it? You know, how much are you gonna take? Are you taking it post-workout? Are you taking it right in the morning? Are you taking it before you go to bed? Now, different proteins can be taken at different times. Talk about whey protein, like I just said. Pulse workout would be great. Right when you wake up in the morning you would be great to stop that catabolic stage of um, that entire resting time when you go to sleep. So right when you wake up, it's a great time for whey protein. Post workout right after um, a workout, your muscles are starving. You're gonna go in that catab uh, catabolic stage if you don't get some food in you. So that's a great time to have whey protein. So we talk about um, casein protein. So whey protein is fact, fast acting. Casein protein is kind of like a time released, quote unquote, time released. So a lot like a like a multivitamin. Some multivitamins are time released, where you know up to a span of like six to eight hours, um, that thing will be digesting in your stomach. So same thing goes with that casein protein. So before you go to bed is a great time to have that protein. If you're not gonna have protein like throughout the day and you know you're not going to, in the morning would be an okay time to have that casein shake because it'll digest over time throughout the day. So my recommendation is whey protein 
in the morning, whey protein post-workout, and a casein shake before bed. Excuse me. So these animal proteins, these egg proteins, and the soy proteins are kind of have like a mix of both fast acting and time released or slow acting proteins in that. So those can be taken um, if you can't have whey protein or you can't have casein protein. So the last thing I want to talk about, guys, is the ease of use. Super simple stuff, guys. Digestibility and blendability. Now, you don't want to be taking something where you have to put a shaker ball in it and you have to shake the crap out of it to make it blend. Okay, so shaker balls should not be used when it comes to that. If your protein shake won't blend when you're shaking the crap out of it, then it's probably going to be really hard to digest. <laughs> so digestibility. Um, if you're lactose intolerant, things like that. If you're, if, if a protein is too thick for you, like a weight gaining protein where there's tons of carbs in it and tons of calories, that's probably going to be really hard to digest. So things you want to look for in that is the macronutrients in it. If it's high carb, if it's a little high on the fat, if it's high calorie, it's going to be hard on your digestive system. So if you have digestive issues, stay away from things like that. Um, but blendability should not be an issue when it comes to a protein shake. If you can't blend that thing just by shaking it in a shaker bottle a couple times, don't drink it. It's not going to be easy to digest. So make sure you guys know about your digestive system. If you're having digestive issues, make sure you use like a really probably a lean shake, low fat, low carb, low calorie, higher on the protein, and just to make it easier on yourself so you're not going to the bathroom and you're not sick. So hope these tips give you guys a little more information on what kind of proteins you guys should buy at the stores or online, whatever it is. Um, hope you learned something from this video and we'll see you next time.